sub D for you and me. This is the second video where we'll look at how we can continue modeling our chair. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, please go into the show notes. There is a link to the playlist where you can find video number one. In this video, we will learn more about edge loops. We will learn about how to create bridges. All right, let's go. In the last video, we learned about how to extrude edges. We learned how to bridge edges. We learned how to create creases. We also used the reflect sub D that's still on. You can see that, that this, this red line indicates that we are mirroring this object. And now we will continue to build our framework and basically creating more loops around the chair where we need them. And then later we're gonna infill that. Now, what I want to do is to create two segments from the, f the front of the chair, from the sit, from the edge of the seat, coming down, creating the foot on the, creating the, f the foot on each side. Maybe I should I just sketch it quickly. So basically, what I will try to do is extrude faces like this, and then from the top of the chair of the backrest, we will extrude another one, another loop and that will basically create our armrest and combined with the foot and with the backrest and then we'll build more stuff we will build another one which is reaching behind the foot to the the, the foot in the back so that will be another one later we will build a loop around these holes and then we'll combine everything into one into one model into a closed model all right, okay, let's let's try this. First, I think we need another subdivision here. So I will just, by now you should know, I can either select the edge here and subdivide, and I can snap here to the center possibly. And now this is a bit out of shape. It's not really anymore what I had before. So I can pull this back to keep it a similar shape as I had before. It's always good to right, adjust it right away. And now I have I have a subdivision here basically a face. So if, if I want to look at it as a face, you can look at it like this. Um, I also want to hide here. No, I don't want to hide them, but I want to lock the images. Okay. So now I can extrude first. So there's of course different ways on how you can work this, but I, I would probably grab the edge here. And by now we already know we can extrude with this uh, small ball. And you have different options here and you can put a numeric entry, but I would just grab this and pull it out. So my, the edge here aligns with this. Now I can, I can grab the point, make this a, a crease. I want this to be a hard crease, which snaps to the ground. I can take again, I'll take this here and pull it down, rotate roughly. Interestingly, this is not turn off the grid snap for now. If it doesn't snap to the grid, you can try this. So if you just grab the point and move it and it actually snaps to the grid, can do the same here if i if i take it if i grab it on the on the arrow it it moves in increments but it doesn't align with the grid if i just grab the point and move it around then it it, it snaps to the grid it's just something to mention okay so that looks good i think i just need to pull this further in just halfway for halfway here something like that so it becomes thinner now i can again i can cut this or like subdivide this, right click F before you select the edge, you need to right click. It's something to mention. You can hear offset, absolute or proportional. Proportional is, it's basically, it's like a tween between the, the first edge and the second edge. I have it in the middle and I will take this and move it where I think it should be roughly. Now, because I have this selected already, I can just add another edge loop. I keep the proportional editing. I think that's better. And I want to push this up so it comes out perpendicular. So that looks good. If I want, I can rotate that slightly, push it slightly down. Now the, the grid snap is not always great. So I will turn this off so I have a more, I can fine tune it better. And here I will add another edge loop. Now I, I will extrude from here like this. Just need to double check if this is still snapping to the grid. It doesn't have to snap exactly, but later, of course, if I want to snap it to the floor and that's kind of it's crucial. So 
keep this here. And now I also need to check. I want to see if this is actually working. So I might pull this back a bit. We have to fix a few things here. And then take these points, push it slightly forward, forward, yep. one, two, and three. And we have another pair here. Okay, that looks good. Now it's always good to have a look on how this works when, when it's in the hard edge, hard corner mode. We can actually see there's a bit of a problem here. This, but we'll, we'll fix that later. But actually this is not ideal. So the control points actually overlap, which is not great. But yeah, we'll fix that. We'll fix that later. So ideally faces should be always more, they should be ideally squares. So here they are like long rectangles and we will add more subdivisions later. All right, now we want to have another one, another segment, which is going from the back of the backrest, the, from the top of the backrest down to this, to this face. So we could do, we could do this by just creating a, a sub deep bridge and you need to, I always make this mistake, you first need to select the first pair, the first set of edges and then the second one. In that case, it's just one edge and then the second one because you can also bridge more than just one. So that would be now my second one. And he, what's cool here is I could add already more segments. I can add here two segments if I want or three, probably four. Let's, let's keep it with four. Okay, and now we can work again on the front and the side. So if I select here just the points, yeah, that doesn't really, that it's not working yet. That's probably more likely, this situation. Yeah, that's good. It's not perfect, but we will fix that. And later we can just really touch up single, single points here to look at from all sides. We could even switch to the top view. So here we want to probably move up a bit more. Yeah, we want to also rotate it a bit. It looks a bit strange in the, in the front, that's for sure. So there's something not, it doesn't work yet, really. Try to have these edges perpendicular, it feels better. And here, I'll try to push it down. Again, I, you can see if you switch back to with tab, if you, if you press tab, you can see there's a bit of an issue here. Actually, this, I pushed it down, but I actually should be here. It should align better to this first, to this edge here. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. It actually looks quite good. It's just from the front, it's a bit strange. It still looks a bit strange, but we get there. We will fix that. Now, I will add more edge loops in the middle. So I can go here, right click, select here, and I will divide this further in the middle. So I get squares here and I probably will see if I can, yeah, I will divide the other areas later. But let, that looks quite promising. What I want to do now is I want to have another loop which combines the foot, this foot with this foot here, with this, with this edge. So basically moving from here to here, Hoppla, that should be outside and the inner one to the inner one like this and then there's another one in the back which i want to combine like this and here actually it's not correct i want to i did a miss i made a mistake i already made a mistake so i want this to be actually coming out of, of this side and then another one coming down like this so this should be two always two coming down here let me try this again so it's always good to sketch everything out so we go from like this and the half goes down here. One half will connect. Yeah. And the same here. So I will divide these. So create loops here, here, and then we fill everything in. Okay. Let's try this. So this was a slight error. This was not what I wanted. So I can fix that by just taking this face and delete. So now I have this situation. I can add another edge loop here, which I need anyway to refine that upper sitting edge, right? Because from the side it looks like this. That's not what I want. So I can right click and add this in the middle here. Now I can grab the two edge loops and, and pull them up like this. Now I can use the, the bridge function again here and here. Oh, first set, second set. And I only want to have one segment. 
right yeah so i want to have another set of segments coming down here so i i, I will just cut this in half by the way it's always it's always a new adventure because every time I do it, I do it slightly different. But the principles, and I, I think every time it's getting better. Every time it, it becomes, that was not what I want. I, I need to have first the the bottom of the foot. So I, I will extrude these edges here. And now I can, oops, maybe I will try to keep this squared. It needs to be subdivided. I want to have a loop from here to here, basically as an extrusion from 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 this side. So there's a few things we need to we need to learn new. There's a few things we haven't yet looked at. First of all, we can select edges like this, but we can also select edge loops or like strings of edges. So for example, if I use this tool here, I can select one edge and it it suggests what other edges it could select. And then I selected the whole thing here, which is super handy, of course. I can also do, the, for example, now I could go here, select this. It kind of recognized that there's a change. So the edge, the edge could continue here, but because it's a crease and here's not a crease yet, it's, it, it recognized this as one element. I can select, but I don't want to select these. So I deselect the ones I don't need. And now I can extrude that like this. Now the problem, if I if I go into my hard edge mode, you can see of course this is not connected here. This is not connected here. Actually, if I select here the point, I can see it's not overlapping. So I can select both points and use the stitch sub D edges or vertices. And you can choose the location where it should stitch. In that case, it's not so critical. All right. Now this has become one, one point. So switching back actually helped me to see what happened. Now I can, ideally I should have like another edge loop here. So I can select, right click and put this anywhere. So you can see this actually not really aligned at the moment, but it's because it doesn't have enough subdivisions. So we can add more, but let's do that later. Now we can again choose the points here and stitch them together. Okay. Now what we could learn about the next thing is we could learn about the fall off because there's a soft transform and there's a toggle soft transform. If I press here, I can, you can see the greatest ball and that kind of represents the influence of the fall off on how far the fall off will change elements. So if I, if I now, for example, want to only move this tool here, but I can see that the other point is kind of moving with it. I can press here and def and limit my influence to a certain area. So that you can see that my points in, in the hard edge so display, I can see that the point stays the same here. In the soft, it changes slightly. But if I increase that, then a lot of other things move, right? So then this whole thing is moving. We'll go back. It's just something to keep in mind. Now I create my next loop here. This is, I'm still not 100% convinced. I, I think I actually don't need this here. It was a mistake. Yeah, that's that's not what I want to show. <laughs> but I can I can easily fix things. Also, I want to make these creases here. So let's keep it like this. I think this actually makes more sense when I think about the whole geometry. And now I want to limit my influence again and make this slightly square. Yes, that's what I want. So this, this is much better. And I will adjust my points so they align better here. It's always a bit of an exploration. Okay, what I want to do is I want to have one edge loop, which is, or like a, a set, like a, a, a string of segments, which reach from here, from this edge to this edge. And they will roughly align with the, with this uh, curve, curved shape, but they will, they will slightly rotate. So there's lots of rotation going on. And then, and then this here, this edge will align with the up, with the second part of this up backrest, top of the backrest. All right, let's do this. So we need one bridge here and the second set is here. All right, gonna add a few, subdivisions maybe four this time okay 
and now we could in plan view we can adjust our the rotation of these here it works and now i move this but this time i will make sure that i will include the other two in the fall off so i will go here set my fall off and then i can move them we will make this an edge a crease again i forgot this earlier yeah now it's good same here Oh, and yes, so now we haven't really, so yes, we looked at this, but we haven't adjusted the back foot, really. The back foot is very, it doesn't actually align with our drawing. So we need to look at this with the ghosted view so we can actually see what's happening. Here, I would say we need to shift this. And there you need to be careful that you don't cross the line here. If you do this, suddenly we're losing stuff here. Suddenly we actually lost now the second. So suddenly this will look like this. So we lost this subdivision. It's something to always think about. Because now if we move this, the other thing will move as well. So we need to make sure we don't move, move it too far. Yes, that looks pretty cool. Now this could be more up. And now we create another edge loop which aligns with this here. So we can grab this one. We don't want this side here. And now we can extrude, but we can extrude in a certain way. We don't, in this case, I don't want to use this here because it's, yeah, it could work, but it's also a bit weird. We'll, we'll try something else. We can use the extrude function and extrude in a different way perpendicular to the to the surface here it's a bit hard to control so that looks good can again stitch here points and here as well and this time i can show you how that works with the earth the first and the second so i can select stitch select first vertices vert oh let's go back here let's do this and second and then i can can choose between the first or the second point the the location where these two points stitch together and in that case i will i can also even either click here or press f and then yeah it's here so now this the crease get got lost again this is something i find a bit annoying and also the fact that I have to constantly change this selection. I could, of course, do this, but sometimes it just turns off or makes other selection not available. It's, it's a bit annoying. But yeah, this already looks quite, quite promising. All right, we're getting there. In the next video, we'll look at how we can infill the spaces, the empty spaces between our framework and we will also learn how we can keep the topology clean of triangles. At least we will try. This will be a quite crucial uh, video, so don't miss it. Now, if you want to support my channel, please check out uh, membership options in the channel. There will be a link in the show notes for the membership and uh, also for the playlist of, of these videos. All right, see you in the next video. Ciao.